We welcome you into week one of the Mike Turner Show. Hello, everyone. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner as the Eagles triumph in week one over the West Florida Argonauts. Uh, Mike, uh, always special to open up the season on a Thursday night within the friendly confines of Burktar Stadium. Uh, and your team puts on a show against a very talented, very good yes. team from the Gulf South and the West Florida Argonauts. Uh, what did you see out of the 2019 version of the Carson Newman Eagles in week one? Well, like you said, man, it's always it's, it's exciting to play on Thursday night here. Uh, get that fog off of Mossy Creek and get it going early. Uh, I think people were involved in it all over campus. And, you know, it was a, it was a great starting night. And you're right, that, was, that is a very talented football team from West Florida. And uh, I believe they'll win a whole lot of football games this year. Our kids is probably the best one time played together 60 minutes uh, football game we've had in a long time here at Carson Newman. And, and it was great to see uh, how they depended on each other at different times, uh, how they rallied uh, all during the football game in the different quarters. But just to be a part of that uh, a family celebration, that locker room was over with, it was a very, very special night. 20 to 13, the final score, and a, a final. I honestly, felt a little bit like the Wingate game uh, last year, where yeah. West Florida closed a little bit late, uh, but uh, felt like you dominated throughout. Probably could have been a little bit of a wider margin, if not for some uh, some miscues in the first half. But uh, your team persevered, overcame. What does that tell you uh, about their ability to overcome some adversity? Uh, and get the job done. Well, obviously, I'd like to have had those two touchdowns there in the first <laughs> quarter and, and, and made it a, a different game. But, I, you know, at that point, I'm not sure we would have had the chance to, to grow, uh, to trust, and, and to come along as a football team as we did last night. Uh, gosh, you hate to take two touchdowns off the board right away in the, in the first quarter. Uh, they're both mistakes. We can overcome that and we'll overcome it. Uh, but to see them, uh, you know, to see them not let that event, not let that series stop them from playing wide open and having a good time. Uh, you, you look at the first half and you bring up those moments. Fumble uh, on the five-yard line on drive number one and then on drive number two. Uh, hit the home run ball, a 77-yard touchdown pass to Braxton Westfield gets called back uh, for holding. You eventually punt later on in that, that possession. Uh, Anything stick out to you about the response after those moments? Well, I, we talked to them before the game. We talked to them all season about, hey, things happen, but do you, do you really trust? Do you trust yourself? Do you trust your teammate? And, and I watched the football team learn how to trust, and that was, uh, that was a great event. It was, a, um, you know, you, you have a penalty that stops a touchdown. You have a fumble that you know you're going to score, you know. Uh, it's those things that's part of football. You just can't let them happen. We need to learn from that. We need to grow from that and go, hey, we're, we can be this good. We can be this kind of football team that can challenge, and we can be the kind of football team we want to be. Carson Newman gets the job done against the West Florida Argonauts 20-13. to Break down the first half when we get back after this on the Mike Turner Show. <laughs> Back on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman picks up a week one win over the West Florida Argonauts 20 to 13. I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, before the break, we talked about uh, some of the penalties, a, a fumble in the first half that made things difficult. But uh, on drive three, you start to put things together. Toot Johnson sets the tone, a nice 51 yard burst, uh, gets caught at the two, but then uh, the positive thing, it gives you a chance to give Antonio Wimbush the ball. Uh, on the goal line, and Wimbo pushes in for his 31st career score to tie Robert Thomas uh, for 13th on the all-time rushing touchdowns list. Uh, what happened on that drive that the offense had been moving but was able to finish? Well, I think it was it's just execution. 
you know, we're going to be a very simple football team. We get it down the red zone, and, and uh, uh, you just execute it. It's not uh, those kids know how to execute. Okay, they know how to execute. Uh, we've, we've, we're, we're blessed. We, we've got some running backs that have burst, and and they can be explosive and are explosive. Uh, and, and two, we'll have to listen to that in the video about getting running down at the two yard line for sure. Uh, but it was great, uh, you know. Our kids know they can they can put the ball in the end zone, and uh, we we just keep working to improve. You know, you, you you go, you get the ball to the to the red zone. We call it the orange zone naturally. Uh, you can't be four out of five. You got to be five out of five or six out of six. You, that's a, that's got to be a hundred percent deal. No, there's no there's no all oh, this all oh, that. You you got to score. Put up points in the second quarter thanks to the kicking game. Nate Kraft. Uh, first collegiate kicks, accounts for himself well, two for two for the period. Uh, what did you see out of your freshman from Salem, Virginia? Well, w what we expected. He's, he, he is really, really blessed. That when, the, when his foot hits the football, there's a different sound. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, it's an explosion that goes off. And his, you know, his range on the field is phenomenal. Uh, you know, and our kids have great confidence in him. And, you know, it's, it's a different game plan. Uh, when you have a guy like that, part of your offense. Different game plan, too, with your ability to throw the ball. 8 for 14 for the game, 88 yards. Again, we mentioned the 77-yarder that caught, that got called back. Uh, Braxton Westfield uh, certainly looks the part. What's he enable you to do? Well, Braxton and Romaine Kelly are, 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 are big kids. They're, they're long kids. They're kids that can run. Uh, but what they are is they're a threat when they catch it. You know, get them the football and let them make something happen. And, and I got to do a better job. We got to keep throwing it more. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we threw it four. I know, don't have a heart attack. We, uh, I'm we, worried uh, now. Who is uh, this? Uh, we threw it 14 times and, and, and we took away a 77 yard touchdown. Uh, but we, there was other places to get the ball to those kids. And, you know, the, they're explosive also. You got explosive running backs, got explosive receivers. We've got two quarterbacks in Derek and Tyler that that can get the ball to the right person at the right time and make plays and uh, you know we, we just gotta we gotta keep on keeping on. Depth at your skill positions on offense is quite mind-boggling. Uh, Troy Dendy gets his first reps at running back, uh, Malcolm or Mr. Hogue depending upon what, what you want to refer to him as uh, on a given day gets his first touches. Uh, how do you manage that level of talent and depth uh, at the running back and wide receiver positions? Well, you, it's competition anywhere. Competition is great for kids. Uh, competition keeps kids on the edge. They know they have to be on the edge because this guy behind them wants to play too. And when you've got that kind of competition, you're a better offensive football team. Uh, the place where we struggle uh, – on offense all fall camp has been with offensive line because of injuries. You know, you can say you got these returners, but none of them have been there. Uh, you know, Philip McDowell played last night. He'd overcome a broken hand, I think, after one week into fall camp. Uh, Jordan Seal finally got back to where he could release with a shoulder surgery. Uh, Dylan Wilson's missed eight days with a concussion protocol. Uh, you know, those kind of things uh, are, are part of it. and, and you know, I, I give credit to Coach Turner and those kids. They, they, the, the next man up theory has worked. They have represented well all fall camp. Uh, Tavon Murray, you know, we started him at center last mm -hmm. night. Uh, we wanted to get Jordan Seal into the game and uh, protect that shoulder as best we can now. We've got two weeks to work him back in as a center, you know, those kind of things. So uh, we, we need a few more, uh, you know, Nick Root, Represented well last night. We need a few more competition guys in the offensive line, and and that that will make it a complete package. Eagles up at the halftime break, 13 to six on West Florida. We've got the first half highlights your way here on the Mike Turner Show. Right, Wimbush to the left. Evans option pitch right side. Wimbush, Wimbush with a massive hole. He's into the second level into West Florida territory across midfield and across the 40. Forced out of bounds at the 35 by Ferguson. It's a massive 27-yard tote frame. Middle of the field at the West Florida 29. 
Evans back to pass, Free Lansing sprinting out to the left side. He'll duck it. Evans, shake and bake move. Back to the right, across the 25, down to the 20. He picks up the first down before he gets upended by Bell around the shoulders. 29-yard snap back at the chest. Hand off Newton straight ahead. Newton swallowed up, and he'll lose a yard. Back to the 41-yard line, Alonzo Houston shooting the gap to make the stop for a loss. Second down and 11 to go. Andro Pete, ETO in motion to the wide side right. Robles in the gun, takes the shotgun snap. Eagles rush five. Robles hit in the backfield and slung down by Peebles. The Mike linebacker shoots through on the blitz and Peebles drops him for a loss of nine. Fourth down, 19 to go. West four man front for the Eagles. He takes a shotgun snap, hands off to Johnson, picks his way to the left side and that goes absolutely nowhere. Three Eagles led by Brian Bembry meet him for a loss of three back to the 12. Tried to pick his way to the left side of the line, but Johnson, Johnson behind him. Snap back. Robles takes the shotgun snap at the waist, steps up in the pocket, and is wrenched down for a sack. Brian Bembry grabs him around his calves and does the alligator death roll to bring him to the surface. A flag on the play, a loss of two, but you're probably going to decline the flag. Illegal motion, offense number 32. That penalty will be declined. Fourth down. Excellent rush by Brim. and and Eagles in the end zone. No rush from Carson Newman. He gets off a line drive spiral that backs Farrell up to the right hashes at the 33. Farrell running horizontally. Cuts the corner. Tight ropes along the left sideline. Stop and start move. Slips out of a tackle. Reaches the football forward across the 45 and lands up at the 47-yard line. Smiley with the stop to halt a 14-yard return. We strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production. Right, takes the snap, hand off Wimbush on a trap right side. Wimbush powers his way for six. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Eagles lead it, 6 nothing on a two-yard touchdown plunge. For Antonio Wimbush, career score number 31 for Wimbo. He's tied Robert Hardy for 13th on the all-time list. Well, that's what Carson Newman has done, really, the this last 28. Newton back into the game at running back. Reed takes the shotgun snap, blitz from behind, avoids pressure, zips over the middle of the field, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Ray Arterbridge snags it, weaves his way between the hashes, and gets snatched by the turf monster and knocked down up at the 12. Ray Arterbridge read it perfectly and broke to the middle of the field to seize. And Carson Newman still leads it. Marcus Williams will return this kick from the one yard line along the right sideline. Williams shaking, baking a man across the 30, 35, carrying defenders across the 40 over the numbers right side. And finally forced down up at the 42 by Chris Sakamoto, six foot, 225 pound red shirt senior linebacker. And from the Carson Newman 42. Evans takes, option to the left side. Evans fakes the pitch, he'll jet. Evans across the 45 and 40. Evans in a foot race across the 30. A defender dives on his feet as he crosses the 20 and angles out of bounds along the left sideline down at the 16 yard line. Givens with the force out late, but Derek Evans with the wheels to get Carson Newman into the West Florida red zone down to the 16 yard line. A gain of 42 yards. That play's been set up over the last 18, 19 minutes. Eagles have been pitching. Collegiate field goal. Snap is back. UD's hole is down. And Kraft's kick is pure. All good for Nate Kraft. The Salem, Virginia native pushes the Eagles lead back to four. It's 10-6 Carson Newman with 3.31 to play in the second. To the right. Evans back to pass. Hits Westfield on the out route. Complete at the 45. Westfield a spin move. Stays on his feet. First down yardage across the 35. Over the numbers right sideline and down to the 32 where he's finally brought down after a gain of 17. Kedrick Bradley finally got his paws on him but Braxton Westfield he puts it back. UD puts it down. Kraft puts it up. And throw. So Nick Kraft buries his second kick of the day. A 35 yarder. And the Eagles stretch the lead back to a touchdown. 13-6. Those are the first half highlights. Eagles up 13-6 at the halftime break. Mike, uh, what was your message in the halftime locker room? Well, gosh, how could you be more proud of a defense that has kept them to a touchdown? You know, and, and uh, gosh, our kids on defense, you know, we got 
two first team all conference guys at defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Well, both of them had shoulder surgery. They've been very, very limited this fall camp. We didn't say anything about it. It doesn't matter. Uh, but, you know, they've hardly had any work at all because you can't beat and bang on them. you got to protect them. We've had to bring some guys around that Coach Redding and Coach DeWeese have had to work with. And, uh, gosh, our, our secondary, those guys, we, we've got a little bit of depth there that those guys can, can run each other out. But, you know, those linebackers, those young linebackers, a guy like Rondro Peebles last night that probably had a, uh, his first start as a Mike linebacker, mm -hmm. well, hopefully that's just uh, – the part of things to come, you know, with him. But, gosh, our defensive kids just just played their hearts out. Uh, uh, you know, they would. They, we we had some times where they made some plays and, and got in the end zone, but our kids responded the right way. They they, they responded, and it's not a. Uh, in the past, it may have been a little bit of a, a conflict in there, but hey, they just rallied. And to see them come out and be forced to shut them down at the end of the game and celebrate, perfect. Uh, going back to the media day press conferences, what Larry Slade wanted the hallmark of this defense to be was don't give up any big plays right. and did that in spades uh, yes. on Thursday night. Uh, just the long, long play, 27 yards, no rushes over 20 yards, two chunk plays on the day, both of them right. passes. Uh, why was the defense so successful in that regard against the Argos? Well, I, I think that, you know, our kids – worked hard. Uh, Coach Slade and the staff had a great plan against them. Uh, I think we mixed it up front-wise. We mixed it up linebacker pressure, outside pressure. Uh, you know, but, but you know, you, you, you're sitting back there rushing a passer in the, in the shotgun that's six yards deep and, and, the, and the effort that it takes uh, <laughs> and knowing that that's a, hard, that's a hard way to get to a guy. But our kids were constantly moving the pocket. You saw the quarterback he didn't really get to sit back very often and be comfortable. Uh, so anytime you force a quarterback to step up, to step out of the pocket, uh, you know, you, you're getting something done. And then, like we said, the, the way they mix it up, bringing linebackers and bringing outside pressure. But our, our DBs hey, uh, in the secondary, we feel like we, we, we're a good good group right there. And uh, and they can stand up, uh, you know, and, and, and the guys like Dez Farrell and Darius Williams and those guys, and then the you know, uh, Jamarian and uh, Demarcus that we brought mm -hmm. in uh, at, at Christmas time to play. Those guys played and responded right. So, very excited about that group. You bring up pressure on the quarterback. Tough to do, too, with what West Florida does schematically. The ball comes out of the quarterback's hands. Oh, absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. they got a great plan, and that's what you should is get the ball out of your hands as fast as you can. That's anybody in the passing game in it. Get the ball out of your hands quick. And what they do, they've got great talent at receiver. Uh, they understand just like we do. Get the ball out of your hand, get it to that guy, and let him make a play. I, our kids tackle well last night, okay? And, and uh, you know, their whole plan is get the ball quick to one of those kids and let him go make plays, but our kids were making tackles. Eagles get the win over the Argonauts 20-13. to We'll break down the second half after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. Back on the Mike Turner Show is Carson Newman collects a 20 to 13 win over the West Florida Argonauts in week one. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, a second half uh, where your defense bends, doesn't break, and is able to hold on uh, to the 20 to 13 win over West Florida. Uh, let's first start out third quarter. Uh, team swap three and outs, uh, and on your second possession of the half, Derek Evans makes a senior level play on third and 15, 43 yards to the house on a quarterback scramble. What happened on that play and how did he find the end zone? Well, they, they rushed the corner, okay, and they brought linebackers and outside. 
and our kids uh, did a decent job of picking it up, but it opened up so much in front right there for it. Uh, and when you bring linebackers outside as, as, as a pressure package, you do open up the middle. And gosh, it came perfectly clear. They were in man coverage. Our kids were running the routes. And you know, he had a pretty much of a straight shot to the end zone. Fourth quarter, uh, it's vintage Carson Newman football. Hold the ball for seven minutes uh, and end up punting. Uh, you stop West Florida and then get the ball back and drain six minutes off the clock. Have a field goal blocked. West Florida does get a final chance to at least give it the old heave ho, but Trezel Giardini Weish ends the game with the sack. Uh, how proud are you of your defense and offense in those moments to, to close up shop on the win? Well, you know, our, our kids, uh, you know, the, kid, the special teams, you know, accounted for themselves very well. Uh, the, the few times we did punt, you know, we covered it well. There wasn't a big return. Our kids hustled down the field. Uh, you know, we, we, we took care of each other last night in the second half. Uh, you know, we, we, we drive the ball down there in the fourth quarter and, you know, it's third down and we're going to maybe send Derek out the back door mm -hmm. and they had an extra player over there and I thought about, yeah, well, you could check to this, but hey, let's get the ball right there and let's kick the field goal with just a few seconds to go. And, uh, and there's no excuse for that to get blocked. There is no excuse. Uh, we'll, we'll get that fixed and uh, don't, don't let it happen. You can't let that one happen. That puts the game away and you know, nobody has to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Brought him up earlier, Rondro Peebles. 12 tackles, uh, three for loss, a sack and a half. Uh, mercy, what a turn of events for that kid after eight career tackles. Uh, and boy, he cemented himself in a hurry as you're starting Mike Linebacker. Well, he's, you know, we moved him to Mike Linebacker. Uh, he'd been like a Sam Linebacker or sometimes a wheel. But we we moved him to Mike, and there must be some magical about that Mike linebacker <laughs> position, Carson Newman, because if he can uphold Sahim and he can uphold Timo, what they've done in the past two uh, two seasons, he he can uphold that. Will be a great defense. Carson Newman gets the job done over West Florida, 20 to 13. Second half highlights happen now on the Mike Turner Show. To play third quarter, 13-6 Eagles lead. Reed on third and 15 from the Eagle 34. Back to pass, middle of the field. He throws it incomplete. Desmond Farrell, exceptional coverage on Tate Letio. He dislodges it before it can get there. And the Eagles force the Argonauts to make a decision here. Do you roll backs behind him? Evans takes the snap straight up. Five-man rush. Evans hit in the backfield. Now he'll run. Evans freelancing across the 35 and 30. Evans with first down yardage and more. Evans sprinting free across the 10 and 5. Evans scrambles for six. Touchdown, Carson Newman. 43 yards for Derek Evans. He's topped the century mark for the day. And the Eagles, with some magic from the man out of Aiken, are up 19 to 6 with 4.01 to play in the third quarter. Well, that looked like one of those situations where Evans felt the pressure. He broke a tackle in the backfield. If he doesn't break that, Eagles are punting. But the elusiveness and athleticism. Two. Evans under center, takes the snap, gives trap left side, Wimbush. Wimbush hurdles a man, gets across the 40, and picks up the first down, going skyward, landing in the boundary left side down at the 36-yard line. Limehouse with the stop, Wimbush has moved past Tyron Douglas and sits. Westfield is split out to the wide side left. Evans throws his way, complete at the 28-yard line. Westfield sheds a would-be tackler, gets across the 35 for first down yardage up to the 37-yard line. Anthony Bell with the stop, a 12-yard gain to Braxton and Wessels on second and 14. Evans takes, pumps, dumps to Wimbush, left sideline. That's complete for first down yardage and more. Wimbush into West Florida territory, across the 50, and forced out of bounds inside the 45, down at the 41-yard line. Oliver, the one that forces him out. It is Reed, takes the shotgun snap to the chest, three-man rush. Reed steps up, he's hit, and loses the football. Ball game over, Eagles win! Trezel Giardini Weish ends it for Carson Newman. 20 to 13, Eagles triumph.
Those are the second half highlights as Carson Newman prevails over the West Florida Argonauts 20 to 13. When we come back on the Mike Turner Show, it's time for our Eagle Spotlight. That's after this. All right, welcome back on the Mike Turner Show. Time now for our Eagle Spotlight as Carson Newman wraps up a 20-13 Week 1 win over West Florida. This week, Michael Watrang shines it on the redshirt senior class from that 2015 team that made the NCAA playoffs. After winning seven sack titles in the 2000s, Carson Newman has not won one this decade. The Eagles are without a playoff berth since 2015. Despite not having a taste of the postseason, this year's true senior class is poised and ready to make the changes needed to put the program back on the map. Senior class, this true senior class, hasn't reached that goal of the playoffs, and we are working towards that this year. I think what it takes this year is just us to be able to finish, like Coach Turner always speaks on. All of the, a lot of these games that we have lost, they have been by close little things. If we uh, hone in on the little things and we, and we are able to finish, and that uh, can hopefully get us to the playoffs. Looking to make adjustments, the team held a players-only film session prior to week one. Eight of the team's 28 seniors were on the roster for the heartbreaking loss to Valdosta State in the 2015 playoffs, but only two played major roles, led by two-time first-team all-sack running back Antonio Wimbush, who knows his leadership role must expand. You know, every day I try to, you know, just give my all pretty much and uh, just with my actions showing that. and. Uh, if we have guys that are slacking or something, I'll speak up or uh, if they have questions or something because I've been there. Like you said, I've been here for five years or going on five. You know, I help them out with that and just stuff like that. Just picking up everybody, you know, every day and uh, just trying to do everything to the best of my ability. While individual improvement is evident over the last few years, the senior class has been on a journey from the day they stepped on campus. A path that Williams believes has paved the way to success. It's really crazy because all the true seniors, we all came in together. We were all freshmen coming in. We had to uh, work our way up. We didn't really know too much as a freshman. And just be able to grow with each other each year, year after year, just being able to be together all these years, really. We've been the same team since freshman year. So just for us to be able to grow and uh, get accolades and uh, everything is all good with um, that we just have to be able to be, a, be able to do this as a team, just all the seniors, because this is our year to uh, be able to do it. Nearly half of the seniors have postseason laurels to their name. The record books are littered with the 2019 senior class, but Wimbush speaks for his peers that this year is time for the team to put their stamp on Carson Newman football. I'm not really worried about that. After tearing my ACL, I, I shot away from, you know, looking at records or anything. And, uh, you know, just taking everything one day at a time. So uh, just my, my biggest focus right now is really today. And, uh, I mean, just getting past one game at a time. And in November, hopefully, you know, see us in the playoffs and further than that. That way we do have the opportunity to get our rings and stuff like that. The belief around the locker room is that the Eagles are poised for a breakout campaign. Coach Mike Turner said, quote, if you spend a day and weren't great at it, then shame on you. Wimbush, Williams, and the rest of the seniors are not going to waste days looking to put an end to the drought in 2019. For the Eagle Sports Network, I'm Michael Watrang. All right, thank you very much, Michael Watrang, Mike Turner. Uh, a group of eight guys who are five-year players in this program. Several of them already have their undergraduate degrees. What's this unit meant to this program as uh, super senior leaders? Well, it's an honor in your program. Last year, the year before, this year, uh, kids that have graduated, uh, they're back to play, and, and the real prize to that is they're working on a master's degree, they're getting an MBA degree or whatever. And uh, man, what, what a great jump start on your career, your life, uh, to being able to play 
college football to be able to come out with a degree, but also to come out with a master's degree. Uh, and, and, and those kids, uh, I, I admire them. Uh, they've been great parts of this program, and they're great examples and role models for young kids to come along. All right, turn your attention now to uh, some rest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, the weird situation. You start the season and, hey, let's take a break for 16 days before you open South Atlantic Conference play against the Wingate Bulldogs on, mercy, September 21st. Uh, what do you do with the time? Well, I've always thought that's the most miserable time for a football coach, but the way it worked out in our camp with three weeks plus of hard work of what we've done, uh, and it comes a time where you still uh, kids are still rehabbing, trying to get healthy. And, and I do believe the key to this football team is if we can keep those key people in there and keep them healthy. Uh, we want to take next week, we've given the kids off. Uh, you know, we, we usually put on a Thursday night and have a Labor Day weekend. This yeah. year the calendar, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but anyway, so we play last night. We're taking the kids, let them have the weekend off. We'll come back in on Monday and uh, wrap up West Florida. Uh, make sure we get plenty of running in because I, I do think we promised those kids and they worked at it this summer and this fall camp that they would be a great conditioned football team and uh, that showed up last night. I, I think we were the best conditioned football team uh, and they knew that in their heart, they knew that in their mind and when you're there there's not any doubts, you know, can I keep playing hard, you know, and, and when you play people that have great talent like a West Florida, you got to play hard all the time. It can't be a three out of four times playing hard. you gotta, you got to play hard every snap. That's hard for anybody mm -hmm. to do. That's hard for grown people, young people, whatever, to have the heart and the will to play hard every snap. And our kids did that. So we'll come back and we'll work the first part of next week is conditioning and we'll work on basic technique and fundamental. You can never get too much of that because in the end that's what wins a ball game anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll shore up some things from that video and work on that, and then we'll start peeking toward uh, wing and getting ready for that one. Beat uh, Johnson C. Smith 42-6 to uh, in week one to the Bulldogs. Joe Reich's been around the block uh, not as long as you, not as long as Tim Clifton, but uh, he's been there for a minute. What, what sticks out to you about uh, a Wingate team that's made the playoffs back-to-back -back years? Well, they're, they're, they're a football team. Last year we, we played them here, and 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 – I thought we show, showed up well, you know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. could have, it could have been more and that type of thing. Well, what you admire about them is that they kept getting better. Yeah. Okay, Wingate kept getting better, and in the end, there they were. They found themselves in the playoffs. It's a great lesson for our kids, okay? You keep getting better every week. This one setback at one time of adversity is not going to deny you from getting where you want to at the end. Uh, I admire Joe. He's done a great job over there. They're going to be a sound football team. Uh, they've got talent, okay, mm -hmm. no question about that. <laughs> they've, they've got talent. Uh, uh, they're, they're strong in defense, but they're, but they're very strong in the kicking game. Mike, pleasure as always. Uh, thanks for the time. Adam, I appreciate it, buddy. And uh, to wake up here on Friday morning <laughs> after that, is, uh, <laughs> and, you know, the sun's shining, it's a great win for Carson. There's a little fog in the air as well. A little fog out there. Yeah, just like just a little bit. Hang around. That's Carson Newman Head Football Coach Mike Turner on the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Turner Show. Thanks for watching.